good morning, uh, Church on the Rock. Uh, this is Happy Pentecost. Uh, although this comes around every year, uh, there's many prophetic voices out there that are saying that they felt like that this was probably maybe the most significant Pentecost that we've had since the original Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And to give you a little background, uh, but first I want to open up with a word of prayer. So Lord, as we do, uh, as we come celebrating uh, the Passover feast, Lord, and or 50 days ago, and now we come to the time of, of Pentecost, Lord, and the outpouring, outpouring of your Spirit, Lord. We just ask, Lord, for your your wisdom and your grace for us, Lord, and, and Lord, that you would just show us what you plan to do during this time, Lord, that you would uh, grant us a, a fresh refilling of the Spirit, that you would awaken your sleepy bride, Lord, that you would make your church that pure, spotless bride, a mighty army, ready to go forth. So, Lord, I ask for your grace. I ask uh, that you bring into remembrance those things I just to share, how to articulate your heart. And, Lord, we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, this is a Pentecost. And, and actually, the word Pentecost just means 50. And it's basically 50 days from the Passover. Uh, now, in the Old Testament and under the the Old Covenant, it was uh, it was called the Feast of the Harvest, and also was called the Day of the First Fruits. Uh, and the purpose of the of the celebration is to recognize the Lord as the provider of all the crops, and also one to recognize the Lord uh, as the one who deserves all the first fruits of those crops. So just as Jesus fulfilled. Uh, in, in his coming uh, Passover by being the Passover lamb, the sacrificial lamb on our behalf. Uh, so also in the new covenant, the fulfillment of, of the first fruits was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And on that first day, that first sermon that Peter gave, 3,000 souls came into the kingdom of God. So it was a, a, a mighty harvest off of one message. And so as we talk about Pentecost, and I especially want to focus today upon what happened with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and how it applies to us today, uh, I want to start in John. We're going to spend most of our time in uh, the book of Acts, obviously, but I want to read one scripture uh, out of John chapter 20 and verse 22. And it says, And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So this is Jesus after he had uh, risen from the dead and he had appeared to them over time of 40 days. And during one of those times, he says to them, he says, receive, he says, Bre he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So they had the Holy Spirit within them. Just as we do today, when we make that, that salvation experience where we give our, our lives to the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of us. And we have the Holy Spirit, and we are at that time sealed, it says, by the Holy Spirit. But there is a difference between having the Holy Spirit and the baptism or the f fulfilling of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we want to talk about today. So let's set the story by going just... Turn over a page to Acts chapter 1. And I want to read, uh, I'm going to read the first uh, 11 verses. And I'm going to let a lot of the scripture just speak for themselves. Occasionally I'll have a few things to say, but for the most part I want the, I want the word to penetrate your hearts and, and to place it in your own lives today. In verse 1, chapter 1 of Acts, it says, In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. Okay, I want to stop right there. He wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. And I think that's where we're making a switch now. We're entering a new season. Because for the most part, throughout most of of churches probably across the nation would do a lot of teaching but there's not as much doing doing the word doing the the outpouring 
uh, hearing the Spirit of the Lord. And so we, we've entered into, a, I believe, a, a different season, a, a season of where uh, not just teaching, but we are actually doing the work that Jesus did. In fact, if you remember the scripture, uh, John 14, 12, it says that, that Jesus told us, he said that the works that I do, you should do, and even greater works because I go to the Father. Well, we have never seen that yet fulfilled. And I believe we're coming into that time, that season of where not only the works of Jesus, but the greater works of Jesus. All right, verse 2. Until that day he was taken up to heaven, and after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. And after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Now he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be a witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before the very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sights. Now they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So right before he is, he is taking up into the cloud, he tells them to wait in Jerusalem, to wait for the promised outpouring of the Holy Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And if you want... Look at verse 14. It says, they all, they all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And we know that there's about 120 that were in that upper room in that day. Now, after choosing a, a replacement, Matthias, uh, to replace Judah, as we come to the second chapter of Acts, probably one of the most famous that were uh, familiar with and it says I'm going to read Acts 2 and I'm going to go all the way from 1 to 21 and it says when the day of Pentecost came now they were all together in one place suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one of them heard him speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in his own native language? Parthians, Medians, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius, and Asia, Phygria, Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from both from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans 
and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. So as the Spirit fell, it's interesting how the Lord situated it and the timing He had it where all these Jews from around the world were all in Jerusalem for the feast. And it was at that time that the Spirit was poured out. So that as these men who had come to Jerusalem went back uh, to their hometowns, the different nations, they took the gospel with them. And churches began to grow all over the known world at the time. But it also says that some of them made fun of them because it said they were drunk. And I think many times when the Spirit is poured out, it does have a physical effect many times on, on a person's body. And they may shake or they may fall. They may not be able to get up from the floor. Uh, the Spirit will manifest himself in, in different ways to different people. And verse 14 said, Then Peter stood up with eleven, and he raised his voice and addressed the crowd. And he said, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only, the ni it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what is spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days... God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in these days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So there's a promise that, that Joel had made. And he said that the Spirit will be poured out on both men and women, and that they would prophesy in those days. And so we saw the fulfillment of that. And as the story goes on in, in chapter 2, we see that, that, Paul, that, that Peter gives a message. And in that first message, there's a response of 3,000 men who responded to that call and received the Lord as their Savior. And again, as they went back to their nations, they took the gospel with them. Uh, so it was the first fruits of a new age, of a new covenant, of a church that is being birthed. Now turn over to Acts chapter 4. And I want to look at verses 23 through 31. This is the story where in chapter 4 where uh, Peter and uh, John were arrested. Uh, they were brought before the elders, uh, the scribes, and the Pharisees and, and were threatened uh, basically uh, to not to teach or not to talk about Jesus anymore. And so as they were released, uh, I want to start in verse 23 and it says, On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stands, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Which is, is quoted from Psalms 2, which is a probably a very important psalm, especially for the day we're living in and the days we're going into.
Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you know be. They did what was in their power and will and decided beforehand should happen. Now the Lord consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your words with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Now after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So after being filled in chapter 2, after being threatened and, and as they pray, they are once again refilled with the Holy Spirit, which shows, shows us that there's many times we need to be refilled. That as some say, we sometimes leak. And when you get in those places where you need that refreshing of the Lord to come, and this gave them great boldness, despite the threats that they were under to go share the word of the gospel. I want to give you another example in Acts chapter 10. We'll just turn over to 10. And chapter 10 is a, is a story of, of Cornelius. Uh, we're just going to pick, pick the story up in verse 44. But to catch you up, Cornelius was a, actually a Gentile. Gentile centurion. So he was over uh, 100 soldiers in the Roman army. But he was a devout man. It says he prayed and he gave alms. To the Jewish people, uh, prayed to God, and then one day an angel shows up and tells him basically to send for Peter to come and share the, the gospel with them, and uh, he does that, and which is a huge thing for Peter because uh, the gospel was for the Jews. Uh, in fact, when even Jesus was here, he said, uh, I did not come, I only came for the lost sheep of Israel. And so the Lord gives him a vision of a sheep coming down with all the unclean animals and tells him to eat. And he finally, after having three times, he gets it that what he's supposed to do is to share. And the Gentiles also are to be included in the gospel. And so as we pick up this story, Peter goes and he comes into uh, the centurion's home. And the centurion has gathered his family and, and a lot of others in there. And the room is full. And in verse 44, it says, while Peter was still speaking, so he's giving a message, uh, previously he'd been giving you know, the message of the gospel, he didn't even get through his message. So while he was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out, even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. So they saw the same signs that had happened to them that came upon the Gentiles, that they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And in this case, they received salvation, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they received the gift of tongues all in one shot. And they were amazed, and it was obviously the Lord endorsing it. Yes, the gospel is for everyone. Now, one other scripture in Acts, Acts chapter 19. And we're going to look at verses uh, 1 through 7. This is where Paul is in uh, Ephesus. And it says, When Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. Now there he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered him, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Well, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues, and they prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So in this case, uh, the Lord, after being baptized and, and receiving the fullness of the gospel of who Jesus was, Paul laid his hands on them, and they received uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit through the laying on hands. But in these other examples, uh, no one laid hands on them. The Holy Spirit just fell upon them. So there's not necessarily a formula exactly how it happens. All right, let's turn over two books to the First Corinthians. Let's go past uh, Romans, First Corinthians, uh, chapter two. I got a couple short verses I want to mention. First Corinthians, chapter two. Uh, which goes along with again the point I'm making about that we are we are entering in a new season. It says, "When I came to you, brothers, talking to the Ephesians, I did not come to you. I'm sorry, talking to the uh, Corinthians. I'm sorry, chapter two, verse one. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with elegance or a superior wisdom." as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with demonstrations of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. So I believe that's where the, the Lord is taking us now. Taking us beyond just teaching. He's taking us on to where we begin to do it. And in this case, as Paul is saying, you know, I didn't come with persuasive words or with that wisdom, but I came to you in the demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on man, but on God's power. Now, you know, turn over to chapter 4. One, one verse, chapter 4, verse 20, and it says, For the kingdom of God... Paul is speaking again, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Which to me is almost like saying it, it's time that we put up our shut up. We begin to move in the miracles of the book of Acts and beyond the miracles and the power of the book of Acts. But in able to do that, we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need a fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, I can remember growing, I was growing up when I used to spend some uh, summers a couple weeks down, usually in Arkansas with, with uh, my grandparents. And, and I remember uh, in the summer sometimes there was a, uh, uh, a, a Pentecostal tent revival would come to town. And while we never went, uh, it was not that far from the, from her house, and uh, you could hear a lot of noise and a lot of racket coming from them. And I remember everybody at that time calling them, you know, the Holy Rollers are in town, and and uh, and so I think sometimes with the with that outpouring of the Spirit and and with the talk about the gifts of tongues and all those things that people kind of back off and they're a little low, but through Scripture we see that it, we go by the Word. And it's not the word only. It's, it's like I've said before, you know, if you just have the word, you're going to dry it. If you only have the spirit, you're going to blow up. You need the word and the spirit. And so for us not to fear receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want us to look at Luke, going back to Luke chapter 11. Because some people are nervous and maybe from experiences they've had in their life. Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 13. 
And this is Jesus, he's saying, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers... If your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So both verses 9 through 11 have to do with receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit not to be fearful and if you would ask if you will seek if you will knock you will find he will answer he will give you a good gift he will not give you something evil so we do not need to fear as we come before the Lord asking him to bring again a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit now I want to kind of switch gears a little bit because as we talk about the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and what happens, uh, probably one of the most controversial things is, uh, is regarding the gift of tongues, of receiving your prayer language because uh, it it's, can be kind of divisional. Uh, uh, for some people, they hear it. And I remember the first time I heard someone do it, I thought, that was weird. You know, what is that about? Uh, and so I think there's a natural sometimes reaction, but it is such an important uh, tool for the believer because it edifies yourself, it builds you up, it strengthens you. And we're going to look at a couple scriptures. I want to go to uh, Romans chapter 8. And the way people, you know, in these examples that I give you that we read through Scripture, just about all of these have been a case where the people many times uh, receive salvation, they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they receive the gift of tongues all at one time. Now, I have found that for many people, and for many even most, and I can say for my own self, that it didn't happen that way. That at one time, you know, uh, give you an example, uh, for, for Glenna and myself, we had both been saved earlier in our life. And at that point, we had received the Holy Spirit. We were sealed. We had the Holy Spirit. It wasn't until later, many years later, until we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because one thing, we really didn't, haven't been taught about it, we haven't really understood it, and then when we did, then we desired it, and we received that baptism, and which created in us just a heart uh, to run hard after God. That's all we wanted to do was to read His Word, to pray, to seek Him, to worship. You know, it, it changed our whole focus, where we were truly first seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now, we didn't receive tongues till after that. Part of that, probably, too, is because probably was expecting the Lord was going to take over my mouth and force it open. <clears throat> I told this story before, but we had gone up on a service on a Tuesday night. This is after we'd been filled with the Spirit, and but we're wanting and desiring the gift of tongues uh, for our prayer language. And uh, so after the service uh, that Tuesday night, they, they called people up, and, and we had a couple that were praying for us and to receive, and, and they prayed, and, and they prayed, and they prayed, and... People were leaving and pretty much emptying out, starting to turn out the lights, and finally they said, well, maybe we ought to you know, try again another time. But it was kind of like, uh, one thing, I, I guess I kind of expected the Lord just to force my mouth open. Uh, but it's interesting, because then the, the next day, uh, I was out uh, making uh, my calls, calling in different companies, and doing uh, my lunch time. I, I was sitting there, and, 
and um, and it was praying in the car, just praying to the Lord, and then and then all of a sudden, as I began to to pray, this language began to come out, and it just began to roll and begin to flow, and um, it was so exciting. And of course, at that time, this was back in 1983, uh, you know, didn't have cell phones, and so I rushed, found a payphone to call home to to tell Glenna that I had, you know, that I received and had that gift uh, of tongues, and it was my prayer language, and so excited, and, and so as I called her, uh, she answered, and she was actually, the same thing had happened at the same time to her, while she was feeding our youngest son in the high chair, and so how it happens, uh, again, sometimes it's all at once, sometimes it's a spread out, there's a time period between it, but first I think we have to know that it is for today. Uh, and that was one thing that we had experienced because Glenna's younger brother had experienced that. And we had his testimony and we saw the change in his life. And so that's when we begin to desire uh, the things of, of the Spirit. And I remember we, we had three books. We got a, a book on John MacArthur, Charismatic, which is very anti, uh, how that was not for today. We got Billy Graham, which is kind of in the middle, his book on the Holy Spirit. And I think Kenneth uh, Hagen's book, on the Holy Spirit, and the more we read, the more we realized that what uh, John MacArthur was saying, he was just trying to explain away the scriptures that obviously didn't say what he said they were saying. And so we knew from the word that it was for today. And so that created that husband that we knew that the word was for it, that we wanted to seek after it and find it. And so after, after a time, we did. We asked, we sought, we knocked, and we received. And then our lives have never never been the same. Now Romans 8 verses 26 and 27 verse 27 says in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Now we do not know what we ought to pray for but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. So as many times we don't know exactly what to pray or how to pray or what is God's will. But as you're praying in the Spirit, as you're praying in, your, in the language that the Lord has given you, and it takes faith, but you're praying God's will. And you're praying sometimes things that you don't know how to pray or what to pray. It's so important that we pray in the Spirit, that we pray, use our prayer language. Now, another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And actually, uh, as you get into 1 Corinthians 12, it's about the spiritual God gifts, the many different gifts and the different uh, body of Christ and how each one has a different gift, the 13 and 14. As you get to 14, he's talking about prophecy and tongues. And but what was happening in the church at Corinth was that, yeah, they had these gifts. They Everyone spoke in tongues and they prophesied, but the problem was they were out of order. There was no order. Everyone was speaking in tongues at once. Everybody was trying to, if it was today, everybody would be trying to grab the microphone and speak in tongues. And, and Paul was saying, hey, uh, you know, that's not doing any good. Your prayer language is for you and the Lord. You know, I'd rather speak, a, you know, a thousand words, you know, five words in, in, in a language you understand that, that brings you understanding than, uh, you know, than to speak in tongues audibly when you can't understand it unless there's an interpretation. So, in chapter 14, and we're going to look at uh, verses 14 through 18, In fact, let's go back to, to verse 13 and say, For this reason, anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says, because that's talking about publicly. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, meaning I will sing in tongues, but I will also sing with my mind. Now, if you are praising God with your spirit, 
How can the one who finds himself among you, who does not understand, say amen to your thanksgiving, since he does not, does not know what you are saying? You may be giving thanks well enough, but the other man is not edified. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So again, he's bringing correction to how it is done. That unless there's someone there to interpret, you don't do it uh, publicly. It's it's your prayer language that builds, that edifies you. It's not going to edify somebody else if they don't understand what you're saying. But it's so important, critically important, to our own development and building our own spirit up. And Paul ends it by saying, I speak in tongues more than all of you, but I do it in the right way in the right timing. So your prayer language is, is huge. So we are entering, a, a, again, as I was talking about earlier, a new season, a new era. Uh, I think when the power of God is going to be manifested. And we as a people need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, a fresh move. And so what I'd like to challenge you today with is just give you uh, four different invitations today. And as you're listening at home, uh, if, you've, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, but you, you see it in Scripture, you see it is for today, and you desire that, just as we look back in, 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 uh, in, in the book of Luke, and then as we, as we looked and said, but, you know, ask and you shall receive. You know, but seek and you should knock and you'll find. And, and if we will place ourselves before him and asking the Lord to fill you, fill you right where you're at with the Holy Spirit, that you desire to have that baptism of the Holy Spirit. The second group would be, you've had the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit sometime in the past, maybe been years and years ago, but you're desirous of a fresh outpouring, a fresh baptism in the Spirit. That would be the second group that I'd be calling, to prepare yourself, to open yourself up, to be able to receive what the Lord has for you, to earnestly seek that refilling. And a third group would be maybe you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you have never received that, that prayer language. You never received that gift of tongues, which again is, is so critically important to building yourself up. There's always a lot of war there against tongues. The enemy tries to say, well, you're just wasting your time. But no, it is so critically important to building yourself up. Because many times, again, you do not know what to pray, but the Spirit prays for you and the intercedes for you. And so I want to just bring those, those of you who have that desire within your heart, and also the fourth one would, would be the, if you have a need, a healing, need a healing of, you, of your body, a physical healing of your body. I want us to be in that place of expectancy, that place of believing that that through the video, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can receive healing for your body, you can receive your prayer language, which is so critical. Or if you, again, need that refreshing of the Spirit, that re-baptism in the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Lord, I just ask right now, Lord, for each one of them, Lord, that are, that are setting out in their homes today, Lord, not able to be with us and... And Lord, yet they come hungry, they're coming thirsty. They want to be part of this next move of your spirit. Lord, I ask that you would answer each and every heart prayer this morning, Lord. That you would touch them with your power. That you would baptize that one out there who has never had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That you would come and you would fall upon them powerfully, Lord changing their life, Lord, forever, putting a hunger with, within them for you. Lord, for those who may have baptized again in the Holy Spirit years ago, but, Lord, they have grown dull and they need that, just as the disciples did, Lord, where they needed a re-baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that you would just do it, Lord. 
that you would refresh them, Lord, with a fresh wave of your spirit, touching them, Lord, setting them on fire again for your kingdom and your purposes. And Lord, for that person, Lord, who has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they have not received that, that, that prayer language, Lord, that, Lord, that even as they begin to raise their voice in praise, Lord, even as they begin to leave their, lift up their voice in prayer, that, Lord, you would give them that language, Lord, that those symbols just would begin to come and it would just be opened up like a floodgate, Lord, as, as the words begin to come out, Lord. And as your word says, uh, the mind doesn't have to be engaged. We don't have to think about the syllables, the song, the songs that we're making. The, it just comes, it flows out from you. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord. And that they would be built up in their inner man through that gift of tongues. So Lord, we, we just thank you. I ask for your blessing upon each one. Lord, I, I pray that Soon they'd be able to come back and join with us. Each week we're, we're seeing an increase of those that are coming back and have feel safe to come back uh, And as we make room for them, Lord. And, and so, Lord, it, it's so good just to see the faces and just to be able to fellowship, to praise and worship together. So I pray that they'd be coming back, Lord, more and more each and every week. And, Lord, I ask for your grace, for your protection. And, Lord, for those who have asked for physical healing of their bodies, Lord, I ask that you would, just as the disciples said, Lord, stretch forth your hand, and, Lord, that you would heal every sick body, every infirm body, bring complete healing and divine health to them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you all. You guys have a, a great day and be in that receptive mode knowing that we are in a new season. God bless you.